Hi everyone, it's Carol here at Ocas Journals and um, as promised I'm going to do just a very quick video today of some of the things that I've brought back with me from my recent holiday and sorry to keep on banging on about my holiday I was really lucky to have recently done a, a trip to Australia um, amazing country you people that live out there you live the dream um, it is absolutely stunning we loved every minute of it it's been on our bucket list for many a year and it was utterly awesome not least because I could meet up with the lovely Leanne hi Leanne so Leanne and I had a ball we were finally able to to meet one of the major highlights of the holiday so thank you for that Leanne so as I say um, a very quick video two things really um, one I'm always being asked where I get my bits and bobs from that I add to my journals and also um, my collages and if you watch my channel you'll know that I participate in the Marguerite Miller collage weekly planner challenge I did it last year and I'm currently doing it again this year so um, I thought I would just show you some of the bits and bobs that I have either bought or picked up along the way during the holiday because I thought that I would be able to use them in one or the other either my journals or in my collages so that's what I've got here but also I was lucky enough to go to the cruel goblin now this is a embroidery shop that Rachel and Sarah did a video of last year and I was so taken with this embroidery shop that I thought that I would make time if I could during the holiday to visit it. So I will be going through the goodies in these two bags here but later on in the video. Now if you're not interested in this part of the video and want to skip straight over to this, the information for where this starts in the video will be listed above and you can fast forward to that. So very quickly let me um, make a start on these. I'm going to leave this little pouch for a second or two because these are some things I bought whereas these are gathered or forage things. So I'm just going to put this on one side for a second and just run through very very quickly some of the things that I have saved now that I've unpacked from my holiday. So this was a key card for one of the hotels that we stayed in and I thought that that would make a great little pocket or or a tuck spot in one of my journals so I obviously grabbed that to save now I could leave it as is or I could cover it or I could just use the other side you can do whatever you want with these things obviously you can make these um, they would take 30 seconds if that to make but I just like having bits and bobs that I've got from my holiday and this would just go in the bin wouldn't it so I'm recycling so I've got that um, business cards. I'm always picking up business cards for my collages. I love them. They come in very handy. I've got here two wristbands. Um, now I've picked these up because these were the wristbands that we wore to go to Scenic World and I'll cover that in a minute. But quite often, Marguerite Miller will say a barcode. And normally barcodes are pretty small. I've earmarked these to use simply because they are long, um, nice long barcodes. And I thought I would use those. So I can see those going in my collage. Um, this is the leaflet for Scenic World. Now, it was a gondola ride, um, the world's steepest railway and um, a cable car going across a gorge. Absolutely fabulous day out. Um, but I've kept it because of the receipt. Now, I always struggle when Marguerite Miller asks us to use a receipt because I can never find them. Either receipts or instructions just never seem to have them to hand. And I thought I would save this because obviously it's a nice reminder of the holiday. It is white, very white, a little bit shiny, but I can always coffee stain that or tea stain that um, if I want to. So I've got that. Um, this is another receipt. Love this one because it's, it's grey. Um, this is a napkin. <laughs> Nothing special about napkins. We, they're ten a penny. 
but I liked the Asian theme on it so I particularly wanted to um, have this and I am going to use this in an oriental or an Asian journal that I have that I bought but I'm adding more embellishment to it so I'm going to use that specifically for that. Um, I've got here a couple of beer mats. Um, I grabbed these because I love this scroll here and the partial writing. Now, you could use these in a journal on a page um, as a tuck spot or something like that. Um, I have earmarked these because I think they would be great for my collages, but they probably would be a little bit too thick. They're not overly thick as far as beer mats go but I would probably try separating these to see if I could take off this top layer here and use that. Just love that flourish, I really do, and the really nice pop of colour. So that's why I save those. Honestly, if anybody ever opens my suitcase to see all the bits and bobs I bring back, oh. Um, this is that scenic world I mentioned. It's outside of Sydney in the Blue Mountains, and as you can see, that's the gondola that goes across the gorge. Now, I've saved this for a couple of reasons. One, because Margaret Miller often asks in her prompts for the assignments a mode of transport, and I thought that would be a quirky one to, to use. I also wanted it because sometimes she asks for a map, and rather than use the usual type of map, I thought this tourist information style of map might be quite fun to, to use. We were lucky enough to go on the Indian Pacific from Sydney to Perth, which is across from the east coast to the west coast of Australia, across the uh, Nullarbor Plain and the Outback. And oh, unbelievable journey, really unbelievable. Um, and again, I've, I've snagged these to uh, to keep and to use in my collaging. Again, because there's a train here, for a mode of transport if that's one of the prompts that um, we get from Marguerite Miller and also just these little tickets as well that came with this um, um, information what is it oh it just tells us our boarding time and whatever so again I've earmarked those for my collaging and similarly <laughs> You'll think I'm so sad here. My boarding passes, again, they've got barcodes on them, but also they're a ticket of some sort. And rather than use the normal tickets that we come up with, I thought I could use these and my luggage labels are on the back. So I'm keeping those. Um, these are some lottery forms that I picked up whilst I was walking round Fremantle the other day. Oh, isn't it lovely to be able to say that, especially as I'm looking out the window at quite a glum um, and cool, if not cold, British uh, day. But I picked these up because, again, these are something slightly different. I won't have these here in the UK. We have our own lottery or, or lotto. And I just thought it might be nice to be able to use those, again, either in a journal or a collage. So there we go. That's those. Um, tourist map of Sydney. Well, again, I've got a mode of transport on the back there, that lovely yacht. And the other reason, not for the map in itself, but for, if I can get this open, there we go. It's a couple of nice animal images there, which I thought would be nice to use. And again, nice reminders of our holiday. If I wanted to, I could use the actual map itself, but probably wouldn't use that because it's a bit glossy and I like using the old vintage maps. So that's why I've kept that. Um, these are a couple of very nice cards that were given to, to me. We made a purchase in a market and bought quite a few things and the lovely lady there said would we like these Christmas cards. They've got chipboard pieces on them, they do move because the idea is that you send your Christmas card and you take these off and hang them on your, your tree or the recipient will do that. I just thought they were gorgeous. So obviously these will be going in Christmas journals. They are a little bit thick, but there's nothing to stop me using them. If not inside the journal, then on the cover. Um, and I just thought they were great, especially this one because I really do like um, Tin Soldiers or Nutcracker figures. And I actually thought that I could maybe cut these down 
so that I've got three and then just cut them across there. So I'm really pleased about these. And then this one was um, a little Christmas card car with all the presents on top which I thought was cute. I can also use the cards themselves inside a Christmas journal because they're pretty pretty nice. Um, this was some brown paper. We found the most amazing bookshop in Fremantle. It was a vintage bookshop and amongst all the wonderful goodies, the wonderful books inside that shop, they did something which was called a blind date with a book. So you had a book that was wrapped up. It was a new book, although everything else in the shop was vintage. It was wrapped up in this gorgeous brown paper and the only hint of what was inside was what was detailed on the outside in this beautiful writing. There was a lovely tag with a ladybird on it as well and it was tied up in baker's twine and there was a whole shelf of these and they were absolutely fascinating so I couldn't resist. I did buy a book and this is the wrapping from it so again I will be using this in a collage and the brown paper I will probably use in a journal. So that's that. Um, these I thought were quite sweet. Life is a journey, make it sweet. These were the little cushions that were on top of a couple of chocolates that were inside a box that was laid on your pillow in one of the hotels we stayed at. So each evening when we came in, there was a little box with a couple of chocolates in and this was the cushion that protected the chocolates inside the box. I've kept the box, obviously, but they obviously won't be used in journals or collages. I'll find a use for those. But I just thought these were so sweet. Oh, sorry about the pun there, wasn't intended. I just thought these were so lovely. And yeah, you'll see those popping up either in a collage or in one of my journals. When we were on the Indian Pacific, they gave us one of these every day. Um, and there's a bit of information about the blood orange, where it comes from. That was our part where we were on that particular part of the journey. So we were almost at Perth. We went from this end here, Sydney, down to Adelaide and then over to Perth on the train. Uh, took four days. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Um, and I thought these were absolutely gorgeous so this was our menu and then you flip it over and it gives you what our breakfast was on that morning and I just folded those in half because I thought that that would be a lovely um, page to use in a journal and it's got a quite a nice heft to it now they weren't giving us these every day for me to um, take away they were collecting them back in but one particular waitress was obviously a crafter of some sort because she let me have three of them um, this is another one and as you can see this is the bush tomato and we weren't quite at Perth that day and then this is uh, a third one and this is a truffle and again this must have been when we were almost at Perth yep this was our lunchtime menu on the train so this is an image of some truffles not quite as colourful as uh, as these two but I still thought that they would make nice inclusions in a journal particularly if I ever get round to making an Australian journal um, no promises on that I really would like to but um, this is my year of unfinished projects so it'll have to wait for 2024 if I do make one but in either way in either case I just thought it would be nice to use those pages um, and then very quickly here I've just got some magazine images so I've ripped out this one because this is a nice autumnal image that I can use in a collage. This one, I just thought that was cheeky. It's an advert for obviously Harvey River Estate wines. So I thought that would be nice to, to use. This one had a couple of great vintage style images. And in this particular magazine, they had these nice pieces of text. This clever uh, trail lets art lovers enjoy the collision of art and history as they explore each artwork. Now, I probably wouldn't use all of that, but I would use the collision of art and history. I like that little bit of that, um, that quote. And I certainly love this particular image. I could use that on the back for another mode of transport in my Marguerite Miller collages. This one could be another mode of transport. It is a water skier. 
But the reason I particularly wanted this page was again this idyllic image of a couple sharing a picnic. Marguerite Miller might say to us that she wants part of the collage to be a summer scene or something reminiscent of childhood summers. So that is something that I could, could use. Also this, this one I definitely picked for this Aboriginal sculpture and again I like the the little quote that's there so that's why I grabbed that again more idyllic summer scenes I think probably I haven't nabbed this page because of those images I think it's more that I like this autumnal image of this girl scattering um, leaves and also this boy on his bike again another mode of transport Again, here, the ultimate picnic, I would save that for a collage. I would perhaps maybe use some of this, potions that will make your skin smile. That's quite a quirky bit of text that I would pop onto a collage or something like that. Um, and then definitely this page because of these two animal images. An assignment prompt might be to uh, use a four-legged animal or an animal that you find in a zoo or an unusual animal so that's why I've, I've grabbed those two um so that's why I kind of am always on the hunt for magazine pages that I can use in my collages um, and that's just a quick explanation of why I have got this very random pile of treasure that I brought back from Australia Okay, so I'm going to set these to one side and lift in very quickly this packet here. And these are some bits that I actually bought that I thought that I would use in journals that I've got on the go. So the first three pieces here are three lots of earrings. Now they are fantailed goldfish and these will be going in my um, oriental journal that I mentioned earlier on, the one that I've bought but I am embellishing with my own take on, um, on things. So these will go into that, uh, that journal. I also have um, a project box for an ocean themed journal. So I have these little turtles here that I thought were cute. And as you can see, they are for pierced ears. But what I would normally do is I would snip off the post from the back of the earring. As you can see, they've got bent bringing them home. I would snip off the post from the back of the earring and I would just apply some glossy accents to the underside of each of those turtles and glue them onto a page. Um, I could skewer the page using the earring post if I wanted to, but I don't tend to like to, to do that. So I've got those to use in my ocean themed journal and I couldn't resist these. These are a couple of um, flip flop earrings or thongs as I'm reliably told they're called out in Australia if I want to be classed as a true blue Aussie. So these are a pair of blue or aqua blue thongs and I just want to use these as dangles in my ocean themed journal. I bought this, now this is a banner of laser cut hummingbirds and I just thought these were absolutely gorgeous. So look at these. And I've got oodles here, as you can see. And I just thought that they would look amazing on a page. Um, I could use them as a tuck spot. Um, if they're strong enough, I could probably back two together by gluing them very carefully together. And that would make them a little bit more sturdy and use them as a, as a tuck spot. I could just use them as an embellishment on the page, but they were very, very cheap. Um, and I've got loads of them here. They're quite, they're just cardboard, but probably about, I'd say 120 grams. So they've got a reasonable heft to them, as Wendy always uh, um, refers to the weight of card by. Now this definitely is going into my Asian journal. Not sure how, I might just tip it in and use it as a journaling spot on the back. I don't know. 
but that was too gorgeous to leave behind. And then finally these, um, I've got two packets of these. These are skeleton leaves, but they have been dipped in liquid soap. And the idea is that you pop them in your um, toiletry bag and then you can use them to wash um, instead of carrying a big hefty bar of soap with you or liquid soap and I just thought these were gorgeous they weren't very expensive at all I think there was something like three dollars for this little selection so I've got five here and then I've got another packet of five there um, and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give these away as little thank yous with some journals that I'm making uh, later on in a couple of months or two. So um, I've got those little bits and bobs that I bought and as I say all pretty random and all pretty quirky but I have a nice use for all of these in journals. Right so now let's get on to what I've got from the Cruel Goblin. So I have two bags here um, and as you can see they came they came from the Cruel Goblin needlecraft shop in a suburb of Sydney called Killara and this is their sort of business card that they gave me and um, I first became aware of the Cruel Goblin because Rachel and Sarah as I've said earlier in the video they made a visit to the Cruel Goblin whilst I believe uh, Rachel was in Sydney and I think that was probably the summer of last year so I thought that whilst we were in Sydney we would see if we could um, get out to the Cruel Goblin and have a look and see for myself what the shop was like plus also I was seriously in need of a crafting hit I was uh, not able to do as much sewing on holiday or crafting as I wanted to or I thought I might have so I was in dire need of a bit of a fix so let me open the first one for you and you can see some of the bits and bobs that I bought so as you see, I've got this really nice canvas bag and that'll be lovely for keeping my sewing in. Um, I picked up some absolutely gorgeous CGT threads and CGT stands for Cottage Garden Threads. It is an Australian company, I believe, and I have some of these already in my stash, but um, it's really quite difficult for me to find the colours that I want here in the UK so I managed to restrain myself from coming home with everything but I did pick up these ones and they're absolutely gorgeous so this one is called Pea Soup as you can see then this one is Skylark then this one is Jack this one is Sage and this one is olive absolutely gorgeous threads i love working with these so i'm really excited to be able to add those five to my embroidery stash um i also picked up these little bundles now these are liberty prints so i've got this gorgeous little pink one here another little gorgeous pink one pink one here these are fat quarters that one lovely and delicate I've got this one which is a little bit brighter as you can see and I've got this one I've got no projects in mind for any of these they were just so gorgeous I couldn't resist them so I've got those then I picked up some of these threads. I've bought these specifically for edging some kits that I bought, which you will see in a minute. So I was thinking that I would edge one of the kits with these twisted together. So I've got a darker green and a lighter green here. So I've got 3011 and 3012. And then the other one I've got here is a red which is 815 and 3011 and I'm going to twist these together to do the edging and you'll see what I mean in a moment or two um, about those and then here I've got two packets of charms and again you'll see why I wanted those 
And then I couldn't resist picking up these. Now these are hand dyed silk ribbon. I thought I might have a go at doing ribbon embroidery again. I haven't done any for a long time and I thought it might be nice to include some ribbon embroidery in some of my embroidery work over the years. So watch out, you may well see these, uh, these appear. But I just thought the shades were lovely. This one is DL32. This one is DL31, that's greens and pinks, gorgeous. And this is Evensong, which is a pale blue, baby blue almost. Very pleased with those. Okay, so those are all the lovely, lovely goodies in that bag. And then in this bag, I bought some kits. One is still winging its way to me because the lovely Julie in The Cruel Goblin, the owner, didn't have the kit in stock so she very kindly said that she would send it to me um, but I have these kits so these are as you can see Christmas stockings so there's that one which is a picture of Santa with a sack on his back and a little country scene down there and now you can see why I wanted these DMC threads because this stocking is edged with these threads twisted together to make an edging and it gives you all the instructions it's just a cross stitch kit so there's the instructions there for me to to follow um, it gives me a list of all the DMC perlay cotton threads or you work this in weak dye works thread I don't know what that is um, but I've got plenty of DMC threads, I just didn't have these. So I've got those two to edge this and I've got the fabric to work on. And they actually give you a needle as well, which is lovely. So that's that and that is the charms that get sewn onto this kit. I had no plans at all to be making some Christmas stockings because we have Christmas stockings here at home that I made years ago um, and we use those but we both Maggie and I fell in love with these two. So that's one kit or stocking kit and this is the other and I couldn't resist this one because it's got the name Parker on, up there or I'm going to edge this one in red and green. This one's got an edging already of green, um, like the Oliver stocking, but I fancied red to pick up the name um, on this one. So again, this is another chart. And again, I have the fabric to work it in and also the charms, the padding and everything else. Um, there was no point in me buying those because I can get that here in the UK. And similarly, these are backed with really fine velvet, this one in a red and the other one, the Oliver stocking in a green. So I'm sure I should be able to get those here in the UK. So I've got those two kits and then I couldn't resist this one. Now this is circles as you can see that are Christmas decorations absolutely gorgeous um, so I bought the chart for that and each of these are about two and a half inches absolutely gorgeous so I really look forward to doing this one I thought that would be quite lovely to do and finally the kit <laughs> that I can't show you is a cross stitch kit of an alphabet sampler that goes onto a spool, a vintage spool. So I've picked up a very, very fine fabric to work it in, and it'll all be worked in this very lovely cotton, which is a nice deep red. So I'm looking forward to that kit coming. It's gonna take a couple of weeks to arrive at the Cruel Goblin, and then the lovely Julie um, said that she would send it on to me here in the UK. So there we go everybody. I thought you'd like to see those bits and bobs if you are a sewer and a massive massive thank you to the ladies at the Cruel Goblin. It was lovely to chat with you. You have an amazing selection of embroidery items. I've never seen an embroidery shop with so many different varieties of threads. Oh, the, the choice was was amazing as to um, were the choice of kits they were absolutely fantastic I could have spent 
a whole day in there and more just looking at those alone but um, Maggie is not an embroiderer so I was testing her patience very much as it was for the amount of time that I spent especially as it was a uh, holiday time so thank you once again to the ladies at the cruel goblin hope you enjoyed seeing what i've put together here in terms of the purchases uh, a massive thank you to rachel and sarah for showing the cruel goblin in their video last year and giving me the heads up that it was well worth a visit um, whilst we were on holiday so take care everybody and until the next video bye bye now